Pythagorean Theorem Lesson 24 Notes, The Notes Review. For questions 1 through 8, find each angle measure in the figure below right. You'll notice I already have the figure filled out. That's because we have already done this problem four different times. If you're still struggling with it, go back and watch either example 4 from the notes or back to the video for Bower 22B. We're looking for three things, vertical angles because they are congruent, linear pairs because they are supplementary, which means they add up to 180, and uh, triangle sum because the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. The given angle is 20, and the first angle I found was angle 1 because the given angle and angle 1 are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent, that's why angle 1 is 60 degrees. Then I found angle 7 because 1 and 7 are a linear pair. Linear pairs are supplementary. That's why I did the 180 minus 60 to get the 120. Then I found angle 2 because angle 7 and angle 2 are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So if 7 is 120, angle 2 is 120. Then I came down here to angle 8. Um, two angles that intersect and have one 90 degree angle means that all of the angles are 90 degrees because they are perpendicular lines. Therefore, angle 8 is 90 degrees. The next angle I found was angle 3, and that's because that angle plus the 60 plus the 90 degree angle all add up to 180 because the interior angles of a um, triangle add up to 180. But I also had explained to you that if you have a right triangle, which this is a right triangle, then the two angles that are not 90 degrees will be complementary. So that means the 60 degree angle and angle 3 add up to 90 degrees because 90 plus 90 is 180. So to find angle 3, I took 90 minus the given angle 60, and 90 minus 60 is 30. Next, I found angle 6 because 3 and 6 are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So if angle 3 is 30 degrees, angle 6 is 30 degrees. Next, I found angle 4 because angle 4 and 6 are a linear pair. Linear pairs are supplementary, so I took the 180 minus 30 to get 150. And then last, angle 4 and angle 5 are vertical angles, so if angle 4 is 150 degrees, angle 5 is 150 degrees. Again, I know I did that very fast, so if you need uh, more explanation on how to do that, Go back and watch the example four from the notes, from the last notes, which is uh, lesson 22, and or go to Bellwork 22B and watch those videos. So last thing to do would be to write the angle measurements down. So go ahead, pause your video, and get everything written down. Okay. Use the figure below to answer questions 9 through 24. If angle 6 measures 38 degrees, what is the measure of the remaining angles? Well, this is very similar to the second part of Bellwork 22B and 22C, except on the Bellworks, you had uh, one pair of parallel lines cut by a transversal. This time, we have two pairs of parallel lines. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Two pairs of parallel lines, which they all become transversals. So let's look at these two parallel lines cut by this transversal first. So ignore all of this down here. Actually, I'm going to do it like this. Ignore all of this down here, and then our trans our zigzag that we would draw would be right there, 1 to 13 to 3 to 5. Okay, now ignore all of this over here. So my parallel lines would be A and B, and my zigzag would be 3, 5, 15, 7. Okay, now ignore all of this up here. So we're looking at this parallel line, this parallel line. And my zigzag would be 7, 15, 9, 11. Last, let's look at A and B again, cut by line L. And my zigzag here would be 1, 13, 11, 9. Well, if I take this and I draw all the zigzags and, t and connect them together, I would go 1 to 13, they're vertical angles, 13 to 3 are alternate interior, 3 to 5, vertical, 5 to 15, alternate interior, 15 to 7, vertical, 15 to 9, alternate interior, 11 to 9, vertical, and last, 11 to 13, alternate interior. 
So all of the angles that fall on that, those zigzags all have the exact same measurement. And then the ones that don't fall on the zigzag have the same measurement as one another. Well, in the given, or in the directions, it says that angle 6 is 38 degrees. So beside angle 6, I'm going to put 38 degrees. So notice how 6, 8, 10, 16, 12, 2, 14, and 4, all those angles are not highlighted. They are not on a zigzag. So that means all of those angles are 38 degrees. Angle 8 is 38 degrees. 10 is 38 degrees. 12 is 38 degrees. 2 is 38 degrees. 4 is 38 degrees. Angle 14, not highlighted. It's 38 degrees. Okay. Oh, and I missed 16. Angle 16 is not highlighted. It is 38 degrees. So I should have eight of these. Now, to find the others, I'm going to use the fact that 6 and 7 are a linear pair, and linear pairs are supplementary. So that means they add up to 180. So I'm going to take 180 minus 38. And 180 minus 38 is 142. So notice how angle 7 falls on the zigzag. Well, all those angles that fall on the zigzag are going to be 142 degrees. So 15 is 142 degrees. 9 is 142. 11, 142 degrees. 13, 142 degrees. 1, 142 degrees. 3, 142 degrees. And 5, 142 degrees. Go ahead, pause your video, and get all of that written down. And don't forget the zigzag. Okay, now that you've filled out the figure, it's time to fill in your measurements. Now, I just want to say, this doesn't always happen. So the next time you do a problem like this one, these might not all be the same, and these might not all be the same. You have to go by the actual figure. But in this case, it worked out that way. Pause your video, get all of that written down, and then if you have any questions for the review for the Pythagorean Theorem notes, please let me know.